Welcome to Revlog this week. We are in Judges chapter 3, and we have found out this is Aaron's favorite chapter. Well, this is a very descriptive story, isn't it? It is a great descriptive story. Now, the two of us are right-handed. Men. I am left-handed. Left-handed. So you, you kind of fit right into this watch story. Watch that you, cross. You, you, uh, across. you can relate to this. Right? <laughs> I guess. <laughs> yeah. You know, I am kind of excited about this story. I once acted this out in seminary. It was fun. In seminary? Yeah. I was Ehud. There was really? role play? In yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Is there any video there. evidence of this? There, there is. I, I, it's long lost, though. Oh. Um, Ooh, that would be... A, I wish I still had it, actually. You know, uh, you know as a, a kid growing up, you know, the, you know, there's some some stories that you're drawn to just right. because they're so fantastic, you know. I mean, this is one of those. That as a it kid, you're like, it whoa! Is. It's got something for the kids, <laughs> uh, doesn't well, it? Okay. <laughs> it, it does. It does. You know, it's funny. Another one of those stories, because a couple of weeks ago, I heard all the, the children clamoring. And, and one of the things they had talked about in, in some of our children's uh, Bible studies was, was when Paul was preaching and the man fell out of the window dead. Uh, that's another one of those <laughs> stories. Absolutely. That, that, that people... That's one that, that pastors try to downplay <laughs> uh, as much as possible. <laughs> I fell asleep and died. So, but here, we get, we get another one of those just... Uh, stories you, you can't forget once you... <laughs> That's right. You cannot unsee That's the right. word pictures. <laughs> yeah, that has to do with closing lipid, in lipid over the molecules. Uh. <laughs> so, Aaron, help us get started. So, yeah. so we have King Eglon. He's yep. a Moabite king. He's, he's not a very gracious king over the Israelites. And um, so God raises up a deliverer to, to deliver Israel from King Eglon. So as, as you read through this story again... What struck you? Well, and, and I hope I'm not, you know, again, we've got a long way to go in our, st- our study here, but, but one of the things that, that struck me was 18 years yeah. that, that um, you know, the Israelites, you know, went back into a pattern of sin and, and idolatry, and then God gave them over to, to, to Eglon and, and, and these, these guys for 18 years. And it reminds me of Romans 1, where, where you know, it's, it says sometimes God's going to give you over to your sin. If, you, if you're going to go down this path and refuse to do the right thing, sometimes he's just going to go, okay. And so, I mean, it's not the end of the story for the Israelites for sure, but, but that's, a, that's a pretty significant amount of time. And, you know, sometimes, you know, if, if we're not careful and if we continue to be rebellious, yeah. you know, God may be just, you know, allowing some of these things to, to happen just, uh, and, and, and we deserve it. Yeah. Yeah, so it, right. it's, it's a tough story, you know, when you're, when yeah, you're the is. one, you know, that this is the chosen nation, these are the people that, that God loves, but, you know, sometimes you deserve punishment. Yeah. You know, I've wondered about that too, going back and forth on that 18 years, because it seems like a long time, because it seems as though for 18 years, Israel did not cry out to the Lord, right? They were seeking other things and they were living in sin. But on another side, we, we also read these stories of Israel where those things last a lifetime. Yeah. Right? And, That's true. And this seems to be 18 years, seems to be kind of a middle of the road kind of thing where, where maybe people came to a moment of, of revival or this, this sort of new awakening with the Lord. Yeah. So um, mm-hmm. I don't know. It's a good question. But I, I noted the same thing about the, about the 18 years. So, Brian, as you read through this story, uh, what grabbed your attention? Well, first of all, I. I believe that, you know, Eglon was a, a person too, and I, I, I don't want to vary too much from that, um, but he, he do, I, I can't help but think about Jabba the Hutt. I can't help but think about that. I, I, I was know. wondering where you were going. I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> he, I'm sure that that's not an accurate picture, but any, any, at any rate. Um, well, I will say, Scripture... <laughs> Kind of paints that picture. Oh, he's, I mean, he's like a gangster type yeah. person. But, I mean, you know? but, but scripture very clearly points to the fatness of the man, and even the sword coming. He, I mean, he was so large; it, it enc- he encompasses the sword itself. Yes, so exactly. There is some sense had, of that. He was in a man of girth, great yeah, girth. He was. Um, but I, I've got to say a couple of things. The the um, Ehud himself was a Benjamite mm-hmm. uh, from the tribe of Benjamin. And we have several judges all throughout this book, and th- this um, position of deliverer, you know, we call him judge, was kind of an equal opportunity 
position. And, and it, it's clear yeah. that God is looking at the entire yeah. nation, all 12 tribes. Many of them, uh, I don't know if all 12 tribes are represented in the, in the judgeships, but these, these men and women came from uh, varied, varied tribes. tribes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and to your point, there too, we'll get Deborah. Uh, oh, that's right. Yeah, right. Men, so. men and women. It was an equal right. opportunity thing yeah. all the way around. And I just find that so interesting that you, you, we have not just Judah. You know, you always think about sure. the tribe of Judah and so forth. Mm-hmm. But these are from all over. And uh, which shows that God was concerned with this entire group of people. And then also, Benjamin, later on in Judges, there's something about left-handed Benjamites. I don't know. There, there's a there's a, <laughs> a an elite strike force of 700 left-handed Benjamites, who, each who could sling a stone at a hair and not miss. And so uh, that's later on in the Book of Judges. But here you have uh, e- Eglon was huge. not was a little bit a little wider than that. So I <laughs> was. I don't think that that skill they're, is necessarily required. They're honing there. their skills. <laughs> okay, very this good. This is later. Okay. Got it. So they started off with. Eglon, uh, that's you know, but there there is something too sort of left-handed battle too because most people are used to fighting someone that's right. right-handed. That's right. And so when you come up against someone who's left-handed, you're you're at a disadvantage because you haven't trained to get somebody who's left-handed, and it comes at you from a different angle. That's right, and and so there's there's a lot of you know strategy there, right. but there's this. It it also speaks to the to the creativity of this people, you know, yeah. and and the creativity of of Ehud himself as well. Yeah, yeah, that's that's wonderful. So, Aaron, as you read, what what question came to mind? Well, just just the idea of just self inventory. Uh, you know, sometimes we we get into a pattern of. You know, woe is me. How long am I going to have to endure this? I'm, I'm going through struggles, and hopefully it's not 18 years. Hopefully it's not, you know, but, but we always need to have some kind of, of uh, Holy Spirit check to say, you know, Lord, why am I enduring this? And, and had the Israelites done that sooner, perhaps, it, it might have not taken 18 years. And I'm glad you pointed out, you know, it could have been 40. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. there, there's obviously times where, where God was requiring a little bit longer penance, but, but the, the idea that, that, you know, if, if we're going through a valley that we didn't, we need to just kind of say, okay, Lord, yeah. I recognize this valley and, and I, but I also recognize that you're right beside me. And yeah. so am, am I, am I taking that kind of spiritual inventory mm. through, through the journeys of, of, of life? Um, and I think that that's a good cautionary tale for the Israelites because their tendency, as we've seen, is to go and abandon, right. You know, and and then uh, they compound their issues because of it. And so, I guess that that's yeah. an observation mm-hmm. and a question. I guess. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Br, as you read, what question came to mind? Uh, wh- what, how, and this is a question that applies to the entire scope of of the book of Judges. But it's very hard to be in a historical situation and see it historically, uh, because I doubt that these folks said. Well, this is the same thing that happened last time. You know, they they didn't. We can see it because it's so crystallized from our distance, yeah. and the writer of the book of Judges makes sure to point that out. But I wonder how how can I how can we gain a sense of history? How can we zoom out for our own lives and our collective lives and see what patterns? would the Lord see or what patterns would others uh, far removed from this situation see here? Yeah. I, I think it's worth asking. Yeah, and I think that's a mark of wisdom. Absolutely. It's so one of the things that, mm, that the yeah. wise are able to do or, or, or both zoom in when you need to be particular and then zoom oh, out a, and see the larger picture. Yes. You know, I, I think that's one of the ways Lord Lord blesses in wisdom is to be able to, to, to move out a little mm-hmm. bit. But it's not, I, I'm not sure that's a natural thing. I think that's a gift of the Lord in wisdom to be able to... I, I think it is. I those, think it is. moments of clarity. 
to reflect on that. That comes. There's also a, an element of self awareness too. Yeah, that's absolutely. that's there. And that's one of the 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 obviously the the Holy Spirit's gift to us to be that advocate, to be that uh, walking beside us, but also the the gift of the Scripture to be able to look at these these examples of, of folks that didn't self reflect or didn't yes. take inventory, and and we can say, you know, I don't want to be there. Yeah, I, I, I want to yeah. make sure that you know I'm I, I continually grub up against what I should, where I yes. should be. Yes, yeah, right. A- absolutely, absolutely. Well, we would, we would love to hear your thoughts uh, on these verses if you would comment below.